Hello Internet, Alex from Barefaced here, answering the question why do Celestian make so many different 12 inch guitar drivers? This is part two and we're going to talk about power. Yes, yes, more power, less power, however much power you need. That is the question. And the guitar drivers that Celestian make in a 12 that we fit run from the 15 watt blue all the way to the 300 watt BN12 300S, which is technically from Celestian's base range, but also the 250 watt Neo 250 Copperback. Or in the variety sort of range, we've got the 150 watt G12 H150 Redback, or in the Alnico range, the 90 watt Cream. So there's a big range of power handling, and when it comes to what power you need for your amp, there's quite a lot of different variables. A traditional way of looking at things is that you should have twice the power handling in the cab of what your amp can put out. And I think that's a nice rule of thumb if you're playing loud and you're pushing the power valves into heavy overdrive. So your power tubes are overdriving and the amp is therefore able to generate more than its rated power. So that, that gives you a bit more leeway. Um, in the world of PA speakers, when you're running a solid state power amp, completely clean, just occasional clipping, uh, which may have a limited stop it truly clipping into a PA speaker, it's fairly conventional to have double the amp power output as the speaker power rating. So you might put a thousand watt amp on a 500 watt speaker. In the world of bass, I would say it's more typical to approximately match them. However, what I would say to you is it doesn't really matter as long as you don't blow anything up. And what you shouldn't think about is trying to optimize to get the best or the most out of your speaker because you only need as much output as you need. And if two watts gets you there with a 50 watt speaker and it sounds good, that's fine. If 100 watts gets you there, out of a 30 watt speaker and the 30 watt speaker never blows up, which is because the amp's never delivering th um, more than 30 watts for a long period of time, sufficient time, I say a long period of time, it could be like five seconds. So it's sufficient time above the rating that the voice coil overheats, then it doesn't matter, um, it's fine. And that, that's the odd thing about this, we're playing music and whether you're playing guitar or bass or any other sort of instrument through a speaker cabinet, you have loud notes, you have quiet notes, you have moments of silence. In a given note, there is an envelope of loudness so it will peak when you strike the note. I mean, it takes a moment to ramp up, uh, but you get that, that attack phase. Attack, then decay, then sustain, and then release. So your power output from your amp is varying and the power that's flowing into the speaker is varying because the speaker is a reactive load. So the speaker has non-constant impedance. So people might be like, oh, well, it's putting out this many watts and because it, it's a 100 watt amp, but it, it's not. It's only putting out 100 watts at certain frequencies with certain inputs. So don't get too hung up on it. And one of the nice things with the way we work at Barefaced is if you don't understand this, if you're unsure, if you're worried, you just email us and we will give you our advice. Um, we're pretty good at getting it right. I'm not getting a lot of emails from people saying, I've just blown your cab up. So we must be doing something right on that front. Now, I would recommend with all these speakers that your aim is to get the tone that suits you most the best tone for you, not the best tone for everyone, but the best tone for you and your gear. But power handling does matter to a degree, which is why you've got a lot of different speakers. So if I go through in order, I have them written down here, I will, this is probably too small, unless this camera is more high res than I thought and YouTube is more high res than I thought, but I'll, I'll stick that in the, not the comments, you know, that bit below, that, that bit, we well, yeah, can point down there. That bit down there. Hey, hey I'm, I'm really understanding this now. So we've got the blue at 15 watts. Then over here, we've got the EVH, 20 watts. 
green back at 25 watts, anniversary at 30 watts, ruby at 35, then you've got the gold, A-type and hemp back are all 50 watt speakers, you've got the V30, which is a 60 watt speaker, I think it's called a 30, V30, because it's 30 centimetres diameter, that's 12 inches for those of you in the USA. Um, and what else is a 60 watt speaker? The Neo Cream, 65 watts, Creamback M, and the G1265 Heritage. Why are their names so similar? It's annoying, isn't it? Um, 70 watts, you've got the V type and the Neo V type. 80 watts, Classic Lead. 90 watts, Cream. 100 watts, G12K100. And yeah, Redback, G12H, 150, 150 watts, unsurprisingly. Neo 250 cop back 250 watts, the BM12 300S 300 watts. So that is kind of how the power ratings jump around. Now, of course, if you get a 2x12, you'll be doubling the power rating if it has identical speakers in. So if you wanted a 30 watt cab with a 212, you could go with two blues, or 40 watt cab, two EVHs, 50 watt cab, two greenbacks, 60 watt cab, two anniversaries, and then we can get to the realm of the 100 watt stuff. So you've got the two golds, two A-types, two hempbacks, 120 watt, you get two V30s, two Neo Creams, and so on and so forth. What we're seeing, I think, nowadays is that people are realising they don't need a 4x12 to handle the power of a big amp, and they don't need the loudness of a 4x12 because once you add more speakers, you gain extra output through increased sensitivity. So you've got more radiating area, so the whole system becomes more efficient due to acoustic coupling. Now, there are two things essentially that limit the power handling of a loudspeaker. One is thermal, one is mechanical. When it comes to thermal stuff, that's to do with the voice coil getting hotter. The voice coil expands more quickly than the motor, so there has to be room inside the motor. That's not normally a problem on guitar speakers and properly designed PA speakers, that, that's been figured in. But the voice coil eventually will get too hot for the voice coil former which it's on, or the voice coil insulation, or the voice coil glue, the glue that's holding the voice coil onto the former. And I believe that's what's holding back something like a blue. Because the strange thing about all these Celestian drivers is that apart from this G12H150 and these 250 and 300, every other speaker here has a one and three quarter inch, that's a 1.75 inch, or whatever that is in metric. What is that? Is that about 40? No, one and a half is 38 mil, so it's 40. 5 mil or something, 45 mil diameter voice coil. The diameter of the, your voice coil and the length of the, the winding length of that voice coil gives you the radiating area of that coil and that's basically how quickly it can radiate the heat out. And bear in mind these speakers, although guitar speakers are super efficient, they're still less than 95, they're still less than 5% efficient, way less than 5% efficient. So 95% of that power that goes in comes out as heat and there isn't a lot of venting going on in these motor structures. There is a vent on the Neo 250 cop back and a BN12 300S but the rest of these I believe are all unvented motors so you've only got radiation into the motor unit which can then suck the heat out until it too gets very hot and a bit of air movement around the motor itself. Once the heat gets, once too much heat goes in the temperature goes up too much and things unstick, burn out, warp, and whatever. So I believe that is the dominant limiting factor when it comes to these speakers. However, the other thing that Celestia explained to me when I was discussing with them about why are, why are the power handlings like how they are, because I come from a bass world and we do things a bit more like PA speakers in that world, so it's, they, they make more sense, they follow more concrete engineering rules. It's to do with the cone excursion and how much the speaker can move 
without the cone buckling and that's particularly the cone edge. I don't know if I've got any cones here. Be useful if I did, but no. But basically that, that bit around the outside of a cone. Now that is going to be related to the excursion of the speaker and the tendency of a speaker to move will depend on the enclosure it's in as well as the signal that's going into it. So one thing that got me thinking about is well in an open back cab a speaker is more free to move. It moves further but that does mean the suspension and thus the cone is under greater load when you put chunky sounds into it. This isn't going to happen with high frequency lead sounds but it is going to happen when you are playing the lower strings, open chord, chugging, palm muting, anything like that. Big sounds on guitar. And remember guitars go low. You know, The lowest string on a standard tune guitar is at 82 hertz and if you drop tuning, if you're playing a 7 or a baritone or whatever, they go lower still. That, that's a low frequency. You try try singing that. It's, it's, it's a low note. So with an open speaker, this open, open cab, the speaker can move more freely. So I would suggest logically a speaker in an open back cab should handle a bit less power than a speaker in a closed back cab. And I found myself then thinking about this a bit more and ended up with this chart, which I don't know if you can read it, but I'll again put that in the uh, down there. So open back cabs, closed back cabs, AVD, that's our unique patented cabs, and ported cabs. And we can see that in an open back cab, excursion is high, closed back, medium excursion for a given input. AVD cab, low excursion, and ported cab also low excursion, because both of them are using Helmholtz resonators to help with the output at low frequencies, which reduces cone excursion. Cooling though, so this is that other side of speakers, thermal power handling. An open back cab, there is, there is space for the air to move out, you know, and then the heat can get out. Closed back cab, the speaker's stuck in a box. You know, the heat is stuck in the box with it. Ported cab, well, unless you put the port in a very specific place, again, the heat is stuck in the box with that speaker. Our AVD cab, that's kind of like an open back cab, but actually the AVD is moving air across the back of the speaker. So I would argue that there is better cooling in an AVD cab than an open back cab, and certainly better than the closed and the ported cab. Now, this means that at low frequencies, an AVD and a ported cab will handle more peak power. Close back is kind of in the middle and an open back cab will handle the least. And I would argue that in terms of continuous power, so that's our thermal cooling, continuous broadband power, an AVD cab should handle the most without overheating, then an open back cab and then the closed and ported cabs. The ported cabs should generally come out better than closed back cabs because there's actually less power flowing for a given input due to the impedance curve. Again, that's another thing that's helping out the AVD cab. So um, I think I'll stop there before it gets more technical. But that's some of my thoughts and explanations on speaker power handling and as it works with these many 12 inch speakers that Celestian make. Ask me questions. I'll be back with more videos. Cheers. Bye.